Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. So when you stay in that glory, in the place of prayer, it's like you are marinating the wisdom. There is a transference of virtue. I tell you, preachers, practice this and surprise yourself. Hallelujah. When you marinate, you cannot undo some things again. It's in you. Hallelujah. So everything that is in the Christ begins to filter into your spirit in the place of prayer. And let me tell you this. I don't know how you pray, but it is not all the time that prayer is a noisy affair. There are dimensions in prayer. There is a realm in prayer called being still so that you will know. The Bible said, be still and you will know. I'm not talking of sleeping. Are we together now? When you, are, when you are asleep, you are not still. I'm talking of a point where God comes down because he wants to transmute realities to your spirit man. And sometimes you can lie down for 30 minutes, one hour. You're not distracted. You're not asleep. You don't even know the name of what you are learning. But you know something is being transferred to your spirit man. For a man of God, that can be the next series for six weeks you are receiving there the reason why you cannot understand is because it's not coming through the gate of the mind it's a spirit communication like a refueling you're lying down in that place of prayer and you just know that you are incubating something mighty is when you get up and go to the place of study you come up with volumes of spiritual intelligence and people look at you as, how does this man get this thing? This is where it works. The boardroom of destiny is the place of prayer. You negotiate your possibilities in the place of prayer with worship. Ladies and gentlemen, you want to look unto Jesus for a life of victory and grace and power. I show you a formula. Show you a formula. Apostle, but I don't know how to sing extract some of the worship I, my, my lovely people here whilst I sat down I heard them just worship it was such a, an, a powerful atmosphere ask them to give you an mp3 get honorarium and give them and ask them oh yeah what you don't honor will not bless you even if you hear it these are elementary things I shouldn't remind you again and they sing something for you or play something like what this gentleman is playing and you're there thank you Jesus I'm declaring my love for you thank you for the honor of being called your own thank you thank you taking your mind away from all the noise and nonsense and the things that distract and as you bless him there is that spirit communication you may not even know that time has gone that's what happens when love happens truly Time passes, you say. Are we together? And whilst you are there, the spirit of grace comes. Let me tell you how the next five years will be. And he, because he will show you things to come. And because you have respected his presence to create the atmosphere. If there is anything I have learned about working with the Holy Spirit, is that his ministry is atmosphere dependent. It is not his responsibility to create the atmosphere. Do you do Valentine's in, uh, in South Africa? Apostle Felix said he's a partaker. So, I mean, he's giving you permission. So, you see how people go through the burden of setting that table? Sprinkle roses you may never touch, but it's still there and go through that labor they are creating an atmosphere 
The reason why many of us do not have a rich fellowship in the place of prayer is because we don't respect the atmosphere. You believe in the Holy Spirit, but you do not respect His presence. It's not occurred to you that He is God. And you just release yourself and allow that glory, that Shekinah, rest on you. Let's say you are preparing for a service, dear man of God. You are not in a hurry. Rest on you. You want to speak life to people? It's beyond Greek and Hebrew. You must draw realities from a realm that is not earthly. And he comes to you. He says, prepare this in the next five years. This is what is going to happen in South Africa. But since you have invested in my presence in the place of prayer, I hope you know that the assignment of the Holy Spirit is to reveal Jesus. That is why seeing his form is not necessary. Because his assignment is to reveal the living Christ. Are we together now? He begins to tell you certain things. He begins to prepare. It may not make sense. I'm reminded of what God told me, Apostle Felix, many years ago. Before the world knew about me. Many years ago. And he told me, he said, son, I should put my audios then. He said, I should put it online and his angel will take it to the nations. And that's how he will announce me. Now, at that time, it didn't make any sense because social media was just in its infancy. You would, you would be unwise to do that kind of thing. But I was just putting the messages there because he gave me as a command. It came in the secret place. And with that formula, to God be the glory. <laughs> Businessman, let me tell you, you can look unto Jesus by investing in prayer and stay there. And he comes to you. He tells you, go and start a water company. Go and start, go and register for an insurance company. Oh, but God, it doesn't make sense. He sees all things. Remember, he's the author and the finisher. So when he tells you what the future will be, he's giving you an advantage. And through the frailty of obedience, you would go and do something there. And by the next time you're hearing that, a new company just came into South Africa and they're looking for someone who has an insurance company. And he said, well, I just registered one. Beautiful, please come. Um, you would not do anything, but would just make you a non-executive board member. Profit after one year will be in billions. And people will ask you, how did you do it? You said the credit goes to him. You see, let me tell you, the way spiritual men are not dull, they are not dummies. Our minds are at work. But there is a frequency beyond brain work. You are not only dealing with intelligent systems and structures, you are dealing with spirits. Are we together now? And once you cross the realm of the cosmos, intelligence does not hold so much value again. Let me tell you sincerely, you will need to tap into a dimension. It is obedience and alignment that becomes the rule that controls the realm of the spirit. So you will find people that are not as intelligent, but my goodness, they are obedient and they are aligned. They will command results that sometimes will, in, will insult your intelligence. Apostle Felix shared something here before I came up. I don't know how many of you who heard that. It's a sad story and we pray that nobody goes to join the occult or any devilish thing. But did you hear what he said? Now, the gentleman who was perhaps doing all those sacrifices, do you think that person didn't go to school? Will he tell you that's the other part? You see that now? But something was working. Joined some kind of occult somewhere. And once you come, you hear him speak intelligently. But what is happening to you is beyond intelligence. You know that there is a force compelling you. This is how it is with believers. Whether it's in a boardroom, when you are speaking, they are hearing you speak intelligently. But they know there is a layer of reality they cannot explain. That is compelling you to acknowledge the wisdom that comes from them. Let me challenge you. If there's anything that has happened to your prayer life, and your time of fellowship with the Holy Spirit, 
let this conference be the conference that restores it you know apostle felix i will tell you this i have been investigating why there has been a decline in the manifestation of power and true dominion as time has you know advanced you check the 60s and 70s some of these generals who have gone to be with the lord and one time i was saying lord what is the difference the difference is not revelation we have a lot more revelation than these people had then and one time i was worshiping and the spirit of god just ministered one word time they gave him more time this is what turned them to men of power they gave him more time it is true there is a distraction in our generation that does not allow us to give God the kind of time that produces power. The major difference between Papa Hagen, Archbishop Benson Idahosa, and these great men was the world was not as busy as it is today. And for some, they literally had to create time because they found the one thing that was needed and they stayed. Satan has distracted our generation. Do you know? The things you have to do to win are not many. It's true. It's true. At the end of your life, you will see that only few decisions were responsible for 90% of your victory. That means most of what we do is a demonic schedule to distract you. It is vain to wake up early in the morning and to sleep late at night. Even financially, meet anyone who has prospered by righteousness minus bribery minus demonic activities they will tell you that there were few strategic kairos moments and kairos decisions when i learned this about god you see me busy i'm not busy doing many things i'm busy doing few consistent things few consistent things you are a worshiper and you are trusting God to announce you to the nations. Be busy doing few consistent things. When your schedules are many, full of variety of activities, is a sign that you are not following the path of your destiny correctly. God gave everybody 24 hours. He calculated it intelligently. If you are living according to your script, it should be enough. When 24 hours becomes too small for you, Find out what and what is eating up that time because there are canker worms that eat years. Is it not in your Bible? You think they come as worms that you see? No, they come as mundane decisions that have no eternal value and have no pro kingdom value. Are we learning this morning? Looking unto Jesus. There are few decisions that make ministry work. There are few decisions that makes business work. That's the reason why you see the results of other people can be very annoying because you don't find them as distracted, yet they command tremendous results. They found the nerve. I don't know, well, with all due respect to doctors, there are times that maybe doctors may be trying to get, um, a, what they call it, a vein. And how many of you have had multiple injections trying to look for it? They search here. And you just tell them this is the last time. You better look well. If you put any, any needle, any syringe, if it doesn't come, then I've made my contribution to my health. That will be it. But there are others who are experts. You are wondering what they are looking at. They tap you and they look and they smile. And with precision and confidence, as that syringe goes in, what comes out is the blood. And sometimes, quite honestly, you, you, sometimes you are privileged to see what they are seeing. But other times you don't know exactly what they are looking at. But they know what they are seeing. They know where the veins are. They've been trained. Do you know the flow? Do you know how to get power? Or are you just doing all kinds of things hoping one of it will work? Do you know how to command favor? Or are you just trying and shadow boxing in hope? The Bible says walk circumspectly as wise. And you distill your plans to the essentials in the place of prayer. That's right. When you bring all your plans and purposes, the spirit of grace begins to edit them. 
this is only a waste of your 10 years throw it away this is a distraction for now don't throw it but keep it on hold this is the most important thing right now i'm launching you into a prophetic ministry so your prayer and fasting must be priority right now he shows you so when other people are saying why are you not doing this you have been you have been tamed by his presence so that you only do the things that produce power everything you do produces when the bible says whatsoever he doeth prospers it doesn't mean whatsoever he wants to do whatsoever he is directed to do i prophesied as i was commanded that's what produced the miracle are you learning now i'll give you one more key but hold the hand of someone and pray in the spirit for one minute you are just allowing what you have heard to distill within your spirit go ahead please pray Shati la ko savrandi gabaranto skevrish lebreketi parato savrandi gebelaka parato ziata embra teke perekete parato skovreti jalakus shata prende silako frasi gebelanto sibriast time in prayer and worship looking unto Jesus time in studying and engaging scripture. Submission to his lordship. In Jesus' name we pray. One more key and we're done for this morning. Please sit down and be very sensitive. Thank you. The fourth way we look unto Jesus. Who is learning? Thank you. The fourth way we look unto Jesus is by looking unto those who follow Jesus. <laughs> the fourth way we look unto Jesus is by following those who follow Jesus. Did you get what I said? You follow those who follow Jesus. Please look at me. The model that Jesus left with the early church was that the first fruit, his disciples, he mentored them by himself. But as soon as he left, he left those who saw him to now begin to, read, to lead others. Are we together now? He did not mentor 3,000 people. He did not mentor a crowd of people. He called 12, in an instance called 72, poured into them, trusted them with that message and left. And the apostle, I remember when they were trying to look for a replacement for Judas. They said there has to be one who saw him. He must have had that eyewitness testimony. And because Paul was not part of them, Paul needed an encounter with Jesus. But afterwards, Paul would boldly say like you'll be learning, follow me. I was not there when he died. I was not there in the lecture room. But I've routed a way of covering for that. Follow me. You will not be in error. You can follow Christ by following those who follow him. There are worthy human models. Look at me, look at me, look at me. Please look at me. Now, let me tell you the truth. I know that um, we've been disappointed with men of God. We've been disappointed with leaders, political leaders. We've been disappointed with people from moral failure, character challenges people who have been involved in all kinds of things but i want to tell you this with all humility and by the mercy of god men can stand out did you hear what i said you've heard me say it many times the moment you pamper the flesh justifying your humanity you have given flesh the right to reign over you it is true that we are humans but what then is the advantage of the word of god what then is the advantage of the will? What then is the advantage of the Holy Spirit? A man can be a worthy model. And in modeling men, it's not just about flawlessness and perfection. It's about the sincerity of consistency. The sincerity of consistency. Are we together now? The sincerity of consistency. The sincerity of consistency. I want to pay attention, please. Listen to me very carefully. There are many people today who erroneously say, you know what? 
I will just follow Jesus alone. I'm tired of men. I don't want to hear any stories tomorrow. Unfortunately, the protocol of growth and transformation and becoming demands that number one and ultimately you look unto Jesus, but number two, you follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. Are we learning now? This is very, very important. When God wants to enhance your spiritual work, let me tell you what he does. By his spirit, he will reveal himself to you primarily through scripture and encounter with the Holy Spirit. Then he will bring before you a human model who has made commendable spiritual progress to personify your expectations. He will show you through a man that this can work. That is one of the reasons why Jesus became a man. He became a man to show men that you can live victoriously as a man. If Jesus did everything as God, it would be unfair. There is every advantage there. So he relinquished that Godship and became a man. So that men can see that in the midst of a bedeviled world, are we together now? If you are hated, you are not the first to be hated. You can still be victorious. If people antagonize you, there is a reference in scripture that comforts you. The Bible says the things that are written are for time, they are written for our learning. So that we through faith and the comfort of scripture might find hope. And then the Bible later on will say to comfort others with the same comfort that we have received. If you get to a point in your life where you cry, it's not unusual. One of the most comforting scripture in the Bible is John eleven thirty five. 35. Jesus wept. I don't know if it's good news, but at least it's comforting that Jesus wept. Jesus wept. Jesus wept. Love wept. Another scripture again was that Jesus died. Life died. Truth was buried. Your truth is not the first to be buried. But if it is truth, the story is not over. After three days. Apostle, I'm, I'm, I mean, people treated me so bad in the office. Don't worry. Your truth is not the first to die. Truth dies. The truth died. But after three days. And when he rose again, they paid some other people to say, look, cover it. And the Bible says, up until this day. That version is still there. There are people who believe that they came and stole his body. So he gives us power to validate that he's alive. Are we learning? Two scriptures. We're about to pray. I love the word of God. My God, I love the word of God. How people can change in one service by hearing truth. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 1. Take it down for me. Thank you. No, not volume. Down. When I down, yeah. First Corinthians 11 and verse 1. It says, be ye followers of me. Who is speaking? Paul. Be ye followers of me. He says, even as I am also of Christ. So you can follow a man that God has helped and shown mercy. And you know you are safe. Only keep verifying that that man, make sure you look at what he's looking at first before you follow. No matter how well dressed, no matter how eloquent, you need to look at two people before you follow. The one you are following and whether he's looking at Christ. If at any point you look further and you don't see Christ, you have a right to make a U-turn. Not with the attitude of hatred, but that the basis of following was based on the safe assumption that you were following Christ. And I have given enough track record to verify that what you are following or who you are following is no longer Christ. So I respect you. And I hope you'll find Christ back. But in the meanwhile, I'm on my way looking for Jesus seriously. Let me tell you the truth. 
sometimes we get emotionally connected to men at the detriment of our destiny now relationships are powerful are we together now but it matters if you are a man of god here you have a responsibility to keep checking the bible says to examine ourselves the wear and tear of life the frustrations that come in ministry it can tamper with your focus and you will not even know when you've turned away from christ to self you don't have to be evil you don't have to be fake you can be real and yet not be following christ did you hear what i said that you just veered off because of offense you started following something else started following money started following fame started following a name that's the reason why at every level we go back for periodic retreats yes, sir. Yes, sir. if you're a servant of the living god here and you don't practice retreats i beseech you by the mercy of god incorporate it as a survival strategy I don't care how many ministrations you have shut down joyfully and go and be with your maker. I've come again. The boy that you found years ago is back to your presence. Search my heart. They may call you a celebrity, but ask the Lord. You need to hear his verdict about you. The secret place is the place of purifying where God will say, well, you are doing well, but pride is already growing here. Deal with it. Lost is growing here. Deal with it. You hugged five people and number two, number three, uh-uh. Let's deal with that thing there. That second and third hug is not, there's a problem there. Let's, let's work on it. You're laughing. This is what he will tell you. You think he will call you an emoji there? No! You are in his presence. It's a threshing floor. Let me tell you, it is better for God to deal with you than men deal with you. Men do not have mercy. Did you hear what I said? David said, I rather, God, deal with me. Don't leave me to the hands of men. You rather flog it out. This desire for money. Oh God, it came, I've applied every principle. It didn't work. That's why now this, this unusual passion for this rich man, it's not that I want him transformed. I'm hoping that he can be a destiny helper. And God says, no, I choose those who bless you. You don't choose them. And he prunes you. You will know someone who is a practitioner of God's presence because when you see the elements of the flesh growing, just give time. He comes out from a retreat, you don't find it again. It's gone. As soon as pride or lust or self or laziness or spiritual care, just when it is springing up its head, the Spirit of God nudges you and says, let's go back. Let's go back. Thank God for what you are doing, but let's go back. And you can cry in his presence. It is a survival strategy. When you get too big to submit to the pruning of the Spirit, know that you have cut short your longevity factor. You will not last. I don't care who, you will not last. Hallelujah. You will not last. So after great programs and great events, while the world is clapping, I quickly go back. And I say, Lord, we're here again. We're here again. And until he speaks, don't leave. If you leave, you will not maximize the next seasons of your life. It is in that place he will vet you. He will score you. He will help you. And he will honor you for honoring him. And God will say, in spite of the fact that I've lifted you, you still have the malleability of spirit to return. He measures a thousand cubits. You are ready for a new season. You come out from that place with a dimension of light and power and grace. And people wonder. I'm telling you, the secret is in the secret place. This, this thing about the secret place. It's a secret place not because you are doing something occultic. It's in the secret place because it's a place of deep intimacy with God. Deep intimacy with God. My prayer is for, help that gentleman under the anointing. First, for men of God, and with all due respect, if you are a servant of the living God here, 
serving God's purposes, particularly in South Africa, I want you to obtain grace and to make a commitment under God that even though I'm, a, I'm human, I'll, by the mercies of God, my life will be a model enough worthy of emulation. Now, I don't condemn people. I'm not one. You will never hear me talking about people and all of that. People have challenges. People have their issues. They have their prejudices. Ours is to pray for them and wish that they come to salvation for those who are veered off. But let me tell you this. One of the ways that you change is by genuine brokenness and repentance. For as long as you continue to endorse the flesh, you give it the power to remain in your life. Are we learning now? It's very important. Please allow me to make reference. Let me refer you to a teaching by mercy. I want you to listen to it. It's called the Purified Church. Listen to it. It's a prophetic word that God gave for the body of Christ. I teach in that message six deadly sins that are cancers within the body of Christ. Listen to it as a man of God. I still listen to it up until, you know, any time at all. It came as a strong burden in the spirit, as a contribution to the purifying of the bride. Worthy models. But that your life will be a model worthy enough to be emulated. And I hope you know, like you'll be learning tonight, that... I told you there are dimensions to Jesus. We'll be dealing with that in the night as we pray. There are people who have looked on to certain dimensions of Jesus. When they looked at Jesus, all they saw was power. So they reflect power, but they did not see love. So there is no love. There are people who looked on to Jesus and all they saw was wisdom. And so they reflect wisdom. But they did not see the nature. You see that now. There is something, I will use this to, to wrap up now as we pray. There's something in the Bible called the fullness of Christ. The fullness of Christ. And let me summarize it for you. There are three dimensions of Christ that must be captured in the life of every believer. Else you are not manifesting and reflecting the fullness of Christ. Number one. The first dimension of Christ that must be captured in everyone if you truly look to Jesus is that you must have the nature of Christ manifest in you. The character of the Christ. What you call the fruit of the Spirit. There are many, many people who have rejected that. They are looking for power. They are looking for other things. If you want to reflect the fullness of Christ in order of spiritual priority, the first dimension of Christ that must be embraced in experience and reflected through your life is the nature of Christ. The true proof that you are a Christian is not praying in tongues, is not laying hands on the sick, is that your life becomes a rich capture of God embodied in a human. The zenith of transformation is not knowledge, it is love. I know many people living in hate. I know many people living in envy, living in jealousy, praying in tongues, working miracles. No, you are not manifesting the fullness of Christ. You are a bad advertisement to the image of Christ. Did you hear what I said? By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. South Africa, hear me. Men of God, hear me. And because we live in a, a generation that places a lot of priority on knowledge and power, most people will reject all these things. i rather be called a powerful person who has hatred. It's, it's more fashionable. At least the sick will come to me. Honorarium will come there. If you say I'm kind, who pays me for being kind? Very out of fashion, but these are the things that hold weight in the spirit. Are we together? I pray to God that beyond being a man of God, I want to be a genuine reflection that my first witness should not be in signs and wonders, nor the communication of mysteries, that my life becomes a rich capture of the character of the Christ. 
that when you look at me you can see love when you look at me you can see kindness when you look at me you can see selflessness if you don't have this in a rich dimension you are not reflecting the Christ and you're looking on to Jesus is highly questionable number two the second dimension to the fullness of Christ is the wisdom of Christ there are people who have character Apostle Felix moral chastity kind loving but no spiritual intelligence they cannot build anything everything fails in their presence and you feel burdened because he's failing in the hand of good people organizations fail churches fail families fail everything fail in their hands because it takes more than character to build it takes wisdom it is through wisdom that a house a life a destiny is built and with wisdom comes mighty works so in addition to the character of the christ a rich capture of the fruit of the spirit the next dimension that represents the fullness of christ is called the wisdom of christ when you access the wisdom of christ then you will build then you will manifest as a king that kingly dimension is wisdom dependent and then the last and the final dimension that completes the fullness of christ is the power of the Christ that produces the works of Christ miracles signs supernatural manifestations hallelujah I think it's uh, I don't know Romans 15 19 did I get that we have to pray media let's try that scripture one try if it doesn't work then I give up beautiful let's read together one two go uh-huh and round about unto Elyricum I have fully preached the gospel of Christ is not fully preached until the power dimension is represented so there are people who have the character of Christ producing that nature there are people who have the wisdom of Christ but they do not have the power of Christ to bring witness to his resurrection. If you want to manifest the fullness of Christ, it is the nature of Christ plus the wisdom of Christ plus the power of Christ. You are manifesting the fullness of Christ. Can I tell you? Every error within the body is because of an exaggeration. Are we together? Or... Um, otherwise of one or two of these if you emphasize the nature of Christ as important as it is and reject the wisdom of Christ and reject the power of Christ you will be a sincere Christian but a defeated one a slave in your society you will be a, a you will be under principalities and powers governmental systems you will never manifest that king priest that dominion mandate if you reject the nature of Christ and emphasize only the wisdom of Christ, you will be a builder. You will have great results, but your Christian testimony will be an ugly sight to behold. You will be a master of compromises in, with, recycled again and again. Because anything goes, you are desperate for results. The character of Christ tames us. Not everything, the Bible says the love of God constrains and then if all you have is power or all you seek is power, you reject wisdom, the word of God, you reject the nature of Christ, you see that you will easily fall into divination and all kinds of extra biblical practices because all you want to see is a manifestation of power. You cannot be a leader that way. You will raise lean and hungry and tired and weak people. South Africa, hear me. If you want to see the fullness of Christ, pastors leaders let's get back to bringing a healthy balance the nature of christ character moral excellence are we together helping people know that in the faith just because we are in christ it doesn't mean anything goes there are things we must obtain grace to say no to and say no consistently and forever 
Are we together now? And then number two, the wisdom of Christ. That we do not just have believers who are void of corruption, nice people, morally excellent, but they are poor, they are broke, they are limited, they never access places of influence, they cannot rise. One policy comes against the church and the whole church falls like a pack of cards because God's purposes cannot be represented in high places. This is the deficiency of wisdom. The know-how to reign as kings is absent. And then the power of Christ. I remind you again that there are principalities and powers. There are all kinds of demonic, diabolic operations. Jesus said, I will build my church. And then he told us that within that vicinity will be found the gates of hell. Only that they will not prevail. But there is what the church must do. He says, Satan desired to sift you at wheat. His desire, he desired it. He's not stopped desiring it. His desire to sift you as wheat. You know, one day I was thinking and I said, if I were Satan, what would I think about me? I said, oh, goodness. This one, I would not even think backsliding. Just, just go. Just go. Satan does not love any one of us here. I give you a guarantee. Number one, he does not have the nature. He doesn't have the capacity. He cannot love. Is the epitome of hate and destruction. Every time you see him, even if he's smiling, he's smiling to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Are we together? Praise the name of the Lord. So when the Bible says, looking unto Jesus, I recap one last time. The mandate to look unto Jesus is first to come with a life of surrender, acknowledging his lordship over your life, and then the determination to obtain grace by the Spirit to set your affection on things above. You must trust God for grace to tame and defeat carnality. Tame and defeat the flesh. I hopefully will be teaching you if God grants grace um, a number of things. The victory of Christ must be studied. He gave us victory against a number of things. According to scripture, at least seven of them. You see that? Yes. The Bible lists them, seven at least. Sin, Satan, hell, the grave. Are we together? The world, the system of the flesh, death. Seven. Every one of these, Paul dealt with it. He showed where the victory of Christ was meted on these things. And the dynamics of operating that victory is different. The sin problem was solved instantly. The flesh problem was not solved instantly. You die daily. The dynamics. Are we together? The grave was dealt with instantly. Death was dealt with instantly. All be it, it can still be meted out in measures in men depending on your degree of transformation. Are we together now? The world, the cosmos, the aeons, the thinking pattern there is victory. That is not instant. You don't claim transformation. You grow by the word. Are you seeing that? The moment you declare Christ, sin is solved immediately. But transformation is not solved immediately. Every day you have to engage the word of God. That renewal by the water, the washing of the word. We have to pray. Rise up on your feet. My beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands my beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands yes you Yeshua, Yeshua. Lift your hands and let's sing one more time. My beloved is the most beautiful among thousands 
and thousands might be love it is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands Yeshua Shali Maratosi Adaba Yeshua It's a new day It's a new season in the spirit There's a part of the song that I really love Yours is the kingdom Yours is the power Yours is the glory forever amen yours is the kingdom yours is the power yours is the glory forever one more time sing yours is the kingdom yours is the power yours Go ahead and begin to pray. Thank the Lord for that which you have heard. Looking unto Jesus. A believer is praying. A child of God is praying. A witness is praying. An ambassador of the kingdom is praying. Steward of God's mercy, grace, power, spray. Shalina Caparanto Sovrezike Belete Caparanto Ziata. This is how we win in the kingdom. This is how we win in the spirit. Shali Caparanto Scobreti La Caparato Ziata. Take a minute to pray. Take a minute to pray. Take a minute to pray. Let your eyes be fixed on Jesus. Take a minute to pray. Cry for a higher dimension in the spirit. Higher level in the spirit. We look to Yahweh. Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh. Yahweh. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh, forever, Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh. Forever Yahweh. Yahweh. One more time. We look to Yahweh. Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh. Hallelujah. For this morning, I will give us two prayer points. And please, I'd like you to pray it with seriousness and with zeal. No distraction. It is you and Jesus. Are we together now? Prayer point number one. That all these four channels of looking unto Jesus, surrender the supremacy of the word, looking to scripture, Number three, prayer and fellowship, even in worship. Number four, 
looking on to worthy models you are going to obtain grace to engage this without fail go ahead and pray i obtain grace to live a surrendered life i obtain grace someone is praying Shabadaka parakata paratos. I obtain grace. I obtain grace. I obtain grace. pray grace to engage the word consistent study of the word hearing the word declaring the word the grace to obey the word Rakata barato pati abash. Come on, house of treasures. Shadi kaparata. Are there people of prayer here? Go ahead and pray. Take the next two, three minutes. Invest in your destiny. Shapari katosh. Embra te kapalakatos keata. Rakate bareke te perente ke praskadish. Rekate balako pratika paratos yata. Shalika barakata barata kata. Shataka pranta kaparaka parakata. Go ahead and pray. Grace to invest time in prayer. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Listen, show me a believer that is committed to living a surrendered life, acknowledging the Lordship of Jesus. Show me a believer who exalts the Word of God to be supreme beyond and above emotions, that you get to that point where the Word of God becomes final authority. Show me a believer who invests time in prayer and fellowship with the spirit show me a believer who by grace has found a worthy model and is following with genuine loyalty and submission i show you a champion i show you a wonder yes, hallelujah one last prayer point and we're done ah, 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 Adonai. Can you sing it for me? From the The setting of the same Your name, Your name is to be adored Adonai From the rising of the sun To the setting of the same Hallelujah. Listen, after this conference, you will wonder and marvel at the kind of believer that you become. Your life will be a worthy portrait of the living Christ.
Hallelujah. Now, final prayer point for this morning. And I'd like you to pray with passion. No looking around your eyes on Jesus and you pray with seriousness. Are we together now? I want us to spend two, three minutes just stretching through this. Now, I told us that when you see Jesus, you want to capture the fullness of Christ. It must be the nature of Christ. My God, I sense such anointing. There's such glory. Just like, like waves and waves and waves and waves of glory. Waves of glory. Resting. There is, there is a making. There is a transiting. There is an ascendance in the spirit. Something is happening to you. I'm about to give you the last prayer point. But let, let's just press for a minute in the spirit. God is doing something. Don't be distracted. House of treasures will never be the same again. Never be the same again. Just two minutes, cry, press in the spirit. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Colin, I'm just sensing to sing one of your songs as we worship. You remember the song? Bring revival as we worship. Send your healing rain. Just something like that. Just once, twice, sing it for us. As we worship. Bring revival as we worship, perform miracles as we worship, send your healing rain as we worship, do it again, Lord. As we worship, perform miracles. As we worship, bring revival. As we worship, send your healing rain. As we worship, do it again, Lord. As we worship, send your healing rain. Someone go ahead and As receive what worship, Jesus is doing in your life right now. Perform miracles. As we worship, send your healing rain. As we worship, do it again, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Here is our final prayer point for this morning. There are some of us here, please look at me. You love Jesus, but the truth is that the character of the Christ is yet to find expression in you. Where there is envy, unforgiveness, bitterness. You may be a great man of God. Pride. And everything that negates the character of the Christ for you that becomes your prayer point it must die this morning are we together number two there are those who need the manifestation of the wisdom of God your life does not have a command of dominion that is the truth no growth no prosperity no increase no influence there is nothing to be desired if the whole world has to depend on you as a template to see Christ. It will be a misrepresentation of the Christ. Nothing has worked in your life, but you are prayerful. Nothing has worked in your life, but honestly you read scripture. What you need is the wisdom of Christ. 
And then number three, there are people who, the reason why you are where you are stunted is because your life is bankrupt of genuine apostolic power. Power in the spirit is beyond falling down and shouting. It is the capacity to enforce compliance. Did you hear what I said? The capacity to enforce compliance. The first demonstration of power and authority in scripture was in God saying, let there be light. And he says, there was. When you say, let there be, and it does not happen, it is not a wisdom problem. It is not a character problem. It is a power problem. The force that, en that ensures and insists on compliance. But if I were you, I would pray all three. You can never have character enough. You can never have wisdom enough. You can never have power enough. It is from glory to glory. I'm going to leave you with Jesus for the next two, three minutes. I'd like you to cry that these dimensions of Christ must be manifest in your life from today. That everything that needs to die must die. And everything that needs to come alive, are, are we together now? That loss, that anger, that jealousy, that bitterness, that pride, it needs to be nailed to the cross in experience. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. This is between you and your maker. Go ahead and pray. Spirit break out. Break our walls down. Hey, hey, hey. Spirit break out. Heaven come down. Make sure you are praying. Spirit break out over house of treasures. Break our walls down over South Africa. Spirit break out. Someone is praying. Let heaven come down. Spirit break out Let heaven come down Heaven come down One more time Spirit break out In our homes, in our offices In this church Across every church here represented Spirit break out Heaven come down Father I pray that, that the character of the Christ Be formed in me in experience Let flesh die, let flesh give way Let Christ be revealed and exalted through my life Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you see a believer with character, not in talk, not on the pulpit, genuinely, you can talk character, you can preach character, but when it becomes your life, on stage or not. Number two, the wisdom of Christ. I tell you sincerely, Apostle Felix, most believers need an encounter with the wisdom of Christ. Else a generation will come that will remain slaves to cosmos. The church needs to rise if we must access kingdom influence. I will tell you this in passing. 
before I dropped the mic. I was acknowledging your man of God and I was telling him, see the power of excellence, systems and structures that something just came overnight and the church had to move here and because of wisdom, there was already a template. All the results were replicated without distraction. That is wisdom. It tells you that the results are not accidental. That is the truth. As much as we want to be humble and, and it's good, but we must acknowledge the truth. When you see results from region to region, results everywhere without failing, it is because there is a formula. If you rise in January and go down in February, it is proof that you are still an amateur in the spirit, things of the spirit. You must gain mastery and dominion regardless prevailing circumstances. Wisdom. By me kings reign and princes decree justice. With me are riches, wealth and honor, yea, durable riches and righteousness. He says, doth not wisdom cry that all you who are of a simple heart come. The earth was founded by wisdom, established by understanding. If your ministry is failing, in addition to character, go for wisdom. And for wisdom, you have to buy it. It's not a gift, a gift from God, but you must buy it. You buy it with hunger. You buy it with meekness. You buy it with endurance. You buy it with discipline. These are the currencies that buy the truth. Hallelujah. And then power. We'll leave that one for tonight. But you have to cry tonight that your head will not be empty. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, and for fellow co-laborers in this ministry, by the mercies of God, I've been in this business of Sarah. That you can look at a life and tell him in the name of Jesus, let your conditions change. And you exert such influence upon the realm of the spirit that everything is manipulated from the realm of the spirit until answers are delivered. It's called power. The capacity to insist on change. The capacity to correct. The capacity to preserve. It's called power. As many as received him, he gave them power. There is power to become. There is power against forces of darkness. There is power that establishes the purposes of God. My prayer for you is that as we wrap up this service, please don't be distracted. Don't waste what you have heard. We have a few hours until the evening. If I were you, even if you are going to hang around or wherever it is, spiritualize your mentality. Don't waste your time. You came for a conference. Make it a retreat stay and pray and say father my heart is enlarged i will not come with a few vessels i'm already owing a lot i need to pay back i need oil did you hear what i said i'm already owing my destiny my children my future is about to be taken as a collateral so i'm not going to come with a little vessel i will go and borrow vessel not a few you can you don't borrow oil but you borrow vessel Vessel there is capacity and large hunger. So that as grace rests upon you tonight, it will not just be two small bottles. You need more than that. The journey is far. By the message of God, within this place, there are them that sell. Ten virgins, five were foolish because they neglected the value of more oil. Don't be like them. They were all virgins, but they still failed. You can be a virgin, chaste, loving Jesus in Christ and still fail. It is not a lamb problem. It's an oil problem. Many of us right now are owing. The creditors of destiny have come to collect everything you have. God has sent us by mercy as them that sell. He said, go to them that sell and buy. Only that you are not buying with money. You are buying with hunger. You are buying with discernment. Please let tonight not be a waste. I know you've attended many, many conferences of this sort, but can you make this a different one? It can mean the difference between now and the next level of your ministry. 
We do not come as those sufficient in ourselves for our sufficiencies of Christ. Remember the prophetic word yesterday? That he that thinks he stands should take heed lest he falls. But I can tell you by mercy and by grace, God will always use men to help men. And now that God has found himself a people willing to help, let your heart be enlarged to receive. The Lord bless you and see you in the evening. In Jesus' name. Come on, somebody celebrate Jesus. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.